Hello my friends. Like most other countries, agriculture in the United States has always had wildlife issues. Basically, most wild animals like wild boars, coyotes and others will cause more negative things for farmers than positive things. To control pest populations and protect crops, farmers in the United States often use methods such as trapping or hunting of these pests. On the other hand, the emergence of many species of wildlife in the United States also helps to attract many people who wish to become hunters and this makes hunting sports and hunting related tourism attractive and an area of strong growth. In this video we will see how farmers and hunters in the United States hunt wild animals. It is estimated that in 2022, the hunting industry has contributed to the US economy around $33 billion. Before we look at farmers and hunters hunting agricultural pests, we'll follow these hunters to Alaska to see how they hunt some of its wildlife. According to a report by the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, more than 105,000 people purchased hunting permits in Alaska last year, and about 23% of those are hunters who do not reside in the state. When arriving in Alaska, these hunters will move into the hunting areas. Due to the remote nature of Alaska, hunters who come here must plan specifically for transportation and logistics during their hunting trip. In Alaska, the prime target of the hunters is undoubtedly the moose. This animal is native to Alaska and about 75% of hunters come to the state because of the moose. It is estimated that by 2022, there will be around 176,000 moose living in Alaska, and 57% of them are males. In addition to moose, elk is also an animal that attracts many hunters to Alaska. Currently, most hunters who come to Alaska to hunt usually target male moose and elk. The reason for this is that hunting regulations are often aimed to manage elk populations in a sustainable way. By targeting the males, this helps the hunters to control populations and prevent overpopulation. In addition, the males often have larger antlers than females making them more desirable for hunters looking for a trophy. The larger the antlers, the more respect and excitement the hunter receives. In addition to the attractive antlers of moose, two other animals Mountain goats and brown bears are also the targets of hunters when coming to Alaska. Alaska's mountain goat hunting journey often presents many challenges. Hunters have to climb high mountains with extreme weather conditions in search of prey. Currently, there are approximately 35,000 mountain goats living in Alaska and about 615 are killed by hunters each year. The 
the number of brown bears currently living in the state is about the same as the number of mountain goats. However, each year, about 1,100 brown bears are killed by hunters. When it comes to hunting by farmers and hunters in the United States, there is one animal that we cannot help but mention, and this is the wild boar. With their good adaptability and amazing reproductive speed, wild boars appear everywhere. They are said to be present in at least 41 out of the 50 US states. It is estimated that there are currently nearly 8 million wild boars living in the United States. Texas is the state with the largest number of wild boars, with nearly 3 million. Although measures such as trapping and hunting are practiced year-round in most states, the number of wild boar killed each year represents only 3 to 5% of the total wild boar population in the country. Although they are a species that cause many problems, from another angle, the wild boar also helps the sport hunting industry in the United States to grow and earn billions of dollars every year. Currently, a number of tour operators in the United States offer wild boar hunting by helicopter to help hunters have a new experience. This also helps to reduce the number of these animals and creates more income for the owners of the land where the wild boar lives. From what we learned, each hunter will pay about 2,400 US dollars to hunt wild boar by helicopter for about two hours. This is the cost of all meals, ammunition, weapons, and other related services during the hunt. Usually the process of hunting wild boar by helicopter will take place in the morning. Experienced pilots know where to find the wild boars and they will take the hunters there. These are areas that have been authorized by the government and landowners to hunt. In 2022, around 53,000 wild boars were killed in helicopter hunts in Texas. And this number represents about 2% of all wild boar in the state. The wild boar hunting industry in the United States generates about $4.7 billion in revenue each year. And hunters from other countries also contribute a lot to this revenue stream. Along with wild boar, the coyote is also an animal that hunters in the United States are allowed to hunt anytime, anywhere, and unlimited numbers in most states. At night, coyotes can come into livestock farms and attack small animals such as calves, goats, or sheep. In addition, there are many documented cases of coyotes attacking both humans and other small pets, such as dogs and cats. Currently, coyote hunting is common in states such as California, Arizona, New Mexico, or Texas. These are the states with the most cases of coyote conflicts with people and pets. It is estimated that nearly 230,000 coyotes are hunted each year in the United States. And this number represents about 13% of the total number of coyotes 
living in the country. Hello my friends, in addition to millions of cattle of popular breeds such as Angus, Hereford, Holstein or Nagoonie, currently many cattle farms in the United States and some African countries also raise longhorn cattle for the purpose of harvesting meat, milk or raising for conservation. In recent years, the most famous Longhorn cattle breeds can be mentioned as the Ancole cattle or Texas Longhorn. In addition, the English Longhorn is also a well-known and popular Longhorn cattle breed in the north of the United Kingdom. From the Great Plains of the United States to the tribal lands of Africa, Longhorn cattle symbolize resilience, great adaptability, and timeless beauty. We are currently located in the western region of Uganda. This is where the largest concentration of Ankole Longhorn cattle ranches are in Africa. Like most other livestock lands in the world, each morning, these Ancole Longhorn cattle will be released from the barn and go into the pastures to feed freely. It is estimated that there are currently nearly 7.3 million Ancole cattle raised in Africa, and they are mainly distributed in East Africa, especially countries such as Uganda, Rwanda, or Kenya where they are of cultural and economic importance. According to the grazing habits of farmers in East Africa, herds of dozens or even hundreds of individuals are usually only grazed in pastures up to three miles from the farm. In addition to helping farmers easily control their livestock, Another reason why herdsmen and their herds don't have to travel too far is because natural food sources in this area are abundant and readily available. Although the Ancole is a culturally well-loved cattle breed in Africa, the Ancole is not the continent's most popular cattle breed. For decades, the zebu has always been the most popular cattle breed raised in Africa. It is estimated that at present, the number of zebu cattle in Africa may be more than 300 million individuals. The Ancole Longhorn cattle are common only in East Africa, and their name comes from the Ancole people an ethnic group living mainly in the western regions of Uganda and parts of Rwanda. On average, an adult male Ankole usually weighs around 1,100 pounds, and the average weight of a female is only around 800 pounds. Compared to Angus cattle raised in the United States, the weight of Ankole longhorn cattle is about 30% lighter. In the grazing pastures of Uganda, farmers often store water for their livestock by building rainwater tanks or digging small canals to channel water. In the late afternoon, when the sun has gradually turned off, the Ancole herds will be herded into the barn to rest. Because there are no predators around these farms, the construction of the barn is also done rather simply, and it does not have a roof. Most herders here 
just need a place to gather their herds close to where they live. About every three days, the farmers will burn straw or other materials to create smoke in the barn to control insects and other parasites. In addition, they say this helps reduce the stress of animals in tight conditions. When the Ancoli Longhorn cattle are eligible for meat production, they are taken to cattle markets and then sold to slaughterhouses. It is estimated that 2.7 million Ancoli Longhorn cattle are slaughtered each year for their meat. More than 60% of these cattle are raised in the western regions of Uganda. We say goodbye to the plains of Africa now. We will go to several states in the United States to see how farmers here raise tens of thousands of Texas Longhorn cattle. According to USDA statistics, by the end of 2022, there were about 273,000 Texas Longhorn cattle being raised in the United States. And of course, many of these cattle are raised on farms in, you guessed it, Texas. Like many other cattle breeds raised in the United States, Texas Longhorn cattle are raised for their meat and cross breeding. However, the most striking feature this Longhorn cattle breed brings to America is its historical and cultural significance. Many ranchers in the United States claim that they often raise Texas Longhorn cattle to preserve and honor the heritage of the American West. In addition, these Longhorn cattle serve as a symbol of the frontier era. Only about 45,000 Texas Longhorn cattle are slaughtered in the United States each year, and meat extraction is only performed on the mature cattle. All calves of this breed are kept until they are at least 18 months old. Currently, the ranch with the most Texas Longhorn cattle is a ranch in Hill County, Central Texas. This ranch has about 420 Longhorn cattle, and each year between 100 and 130 of these Texas Longhorns are sold for meat production and for entertainment or exhibition purposes. Which breed of Longhorn cattle are you most impressed with? Let me know what you think in the comments section of the video.